we're going to take a look at an I-4300 console attached to a simulator. The I-4500 uses the same basic system software, so you can actually watch this video and it will tell you how to do the same functions on your 4500. If you're familiar with the Reiko Wiley I-3500, you will notice that there are a lot of similarities between the 4300 software and the 3500 software. When the system comes up, it's going to ask you to accept the duty selection that was used last time or to change the configuration. If you were using Outrigger or Extended the last time you had the system running and now you're on rubber, you need to tell the system what you have in order for it to give you the proper charts. So what I'm going to do is show you what takes place in order to do that. Okay, the system is powering up right now and the first thing it's going to do is start giving us an alarm. Right now it's asking us to either accept this current duty or to tell it that we're operating with a different one. So what I'm going to do is simply to accept the current duty configuration, we come down here and we hit the check mark. Now it's loading the configuration and it will come up with the same configuration that the crane was set up for, well that the system was set up for the last time it was used. So now we're going to go ahead and change the duty and we do that by hitting this button right over here. This gives us the menu for all of the selectable duties and this crane is configured with a 15 foot telescopic jib which can be run at 15 feet and 25 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and select the 15 foot at zero degrees for the jib. Once it's highlighted, you hit the check mark. Now it's going to ask me whether I'm lifting with the main boom or whether I'm lifting with the jib. So we highlight the jib and we hit the check mark again. At this point, it wants to know what I'm using for a hook block. Now these two values are the rated loads of the hook block. So the single part line block, which is used for the jib, is the 10,500 block. So we go ahead and hit the check mark. Now it's going to ask me how many parts of line are in use. And of course, it's going to be one. So we hit the check mark. If, however, I was using main, uh, a main boom hook block with a four part line possible, we could scroll up or down using these arrows to change that value. Right now, I need it to be at one. So we'll just hit the check mark. At this point, it's asking me whether the crane is on rubber, on outriggers extended and down, or retracted and down. So I'm going to tell it that we are extended and down. And that's it. The duty has changed. In the upper left, you can see that it is now duty number 19. There's also a jib being displayed. And right underneath the tip of the jib, you can see a box that says X01 which is indicating that a single part line is in use. If you've been operating your crane with a multi-part hook block and you're changing the parts of line, you can simply push this button in the lower left and make the change right here for parts of line. The system has two types of displays available. What we're currently looking at is the graphic display. However, you can also push this button in the upper right and change it into more of a text display. And it really depends on how you like to view your information. On the display, we can see the boom length here above the boom. We have the boom angle. We have the radius height above the ground, we have parts of line, and over here we have the current load, we have the maximum capacity at your current angle, length, and radius, and we have the percentage of that which is currently your load. So if I were to be carrying 700 pounds with a max capacity of 1400, this would indicate 50%. Why don't we go ahead and do that just to see what it looks like. That says we have 900 pounds, we have a max capacity of 1400, and we're showing that we're at 66.8% capacity. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if we have a stowed jib on our crane. First, we're going to need to stow the jib. 
So we go into the duty selection and we're going to tell it that we're using main boom and we hit the check mark. We're going to tell it that there's a jib stowed by highlighting the 15 to 25 foot telescopic jib and hitting the check mark. Now it's asking us what we're using for a hook block and we're going to tell it that we're using the 40,500 pound hook block which is capable of four part line. We're going to go ahead and tell it that we're using four parts for that line and we're going to hit the check mark. We're going to go ahead and tell the system that we're using uh, the crane on rubber. Now you'll see right up here there's a stowed jib along the side of the boom. The box underneath the tip says X04 which indicates that we're using a four part line. If we take a look at max capacity it's 8157 for the current boom length and radius and that's it would be higher of course if we told that we were on outrigger but we told that we were on tires. The load reading is 2263 which is 27 percent of the capacity. The system will go ahead and let you know if you have ATB'd the crane by putting a little symbol up at the tip of the boom. Right here it shows the ATB indication and it gives you a stop symbol on this side and the red light has turned on. At 83% of the capacity we still have a green light indication. When we get to approximately 85%, the system should start beeping at us. Okay, we now have 85% and the system is giving us a flashing yellow light and we have a little symbol which shows up here, which is a caution symbol. Basically it says, you're picking up a lot of weight. As the load increases, the red light will come in. When the system sees that the load on the hook has exceeded 100% of the capacity, the red light stays on and the system is beeping. And we also have all three of the symbols showing up above the load area. If you need to continue winching up or booming down or telescoping out, you can override the current situation by pushing the button next to the key symbol. Pushing the button will allow you 8 to 10 seconds worth of override. After that, the lockout condition will be reinstated. We're currently set up to lift with the main boom and I'm using a single part line and you can see the box with an X01 right under the tip of the boom. The max capacity says 10,000 pounds and to the left of it there is this little symbol of a hook block. That indicates that right now the system is rope limited. If I were to be using a four part line that 10,000 pound max capacity would be much higher but since the crane is capable of, of, of more than 10,000 pounds, obviously, but the hook block will not take that, as the limit is currently the single part line. So on the console right over here is the letter I. This is the info button, and as we press it, we can see that a bunch of information shows up. The duty number, the boom mode, which is standard for simply lifting off of main boom. There are no attachments. The outriggers are currently extended and down. There are no counterweights. There's no deduct for an erect jib. However, there is a deduct for a stowed jib and it tells us which jib is currently stowed. And as we scroll down, there's a lot more information present on here. I'm going to take a look at some of the options that are available when the mode button is selected. The mode button is in the upper left hand corner right here and as we hit that we get a drop down menu which has a variety of things we can select. Currently limit mode is highlighted so we'll go ahead and hit the check mark and what we will see is that the max angle and a minimum angle can both be selected 
A maximum length, maximum height, and maximum radius can also be selected. They're currently all turned off. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the maximum angle. And we do that simply by scrolling down. And as you scroll all the way down, it comes up on the other side. So we are currently highlighted for off. We hit the check mark and it turns on the maximum angle. What this will do back on the main screen is as the angle is increased, it will eventually hit a point where we exceed the maximum angle and it will go into an alarm condition. We can tell that the limit mode is activated because it says LIM right underneath the boom angle. I'm going to go ahead and increase the boom angle and you'll see that it goes into alarm mode. With the system in alarm mode you see that the limb designation for the angle currently has uh, a little arrow pointing up against a bar which indicates that we have hit the upper angle limit or exceeded the upper angle limit. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at a low angle limit indication. In order to do that we'll come back in to the mode button, go into limit mode, select minimum angle, and I hit the check mark so now I can actually change the setting digitally. So let's say I want a 15 degree minimum angle. Hit the check mark again, and now it's turned on. And as I decrease the angle, it will eventually go into alarm mode again. And now you see the arrow pointing down against a, a flat bar, indicating that we have exceeded or hit the low angle limit. Now we're going to look at the maximum length limit which is currently set for 30 feet. Once I hit the check mark it will turn it on and then back on the screen we see the limb LIM show up next to the boom length and as the boom length is increased it will eventually go into an alarm mode. Again you see the arrow pointing towards a flat bar indicating that we are at or past the maximum boom length. We're going to take a look at the maximum height limit. It's currently set for 30 feet and the option is currently turned off. So we're going to hit the check mark to turn it on. Hit the escape button and we're going to increase the boom length a little bit and now we're going to increase the boom angle. So now the tip height is 31 feet above the ground. We had a maximum tip height of 30 and it had gone into an alarm condition. Again, you see the tip height above the ground here, the LIM indication indicating that a limit is turned on for this variable and the arrow pointing upwards indicates that we have hit or exceeded the upper limit. I've turned on the maximum radius and it's currently set for 29 feet. We'll go back to the main screen and we see that we have a limit indication down here next to the radius indicating that a limit has been turned on and I'm going to go ahead and increase the radius by altering the boom angle. The radius has now been exceeded and again we have the arrow pointing towards the right against a flat bar indicating that we have exceeded the maximum radius that we have set. Under the mode button the next item is config. So we'll hit the check mark and over here we have the first item which is units. If we hit the check mark it tells us that we can display the system in feet and pounds or meters and kilograms. We would change from feet and pounds by hitting the down arrow highlighting meters and kilograms and hitting the check mark. Notice the change that has taken place in the load maximum capacity and the uh, radius value 
among other things. Everything else has changed too. Now if we go back to feet and pounds, all the numbers are back where we had them before. The next item is set tear. If we hit the check mark on this, what it's going to do is zero out the current load which you have on your hook. Currently we're displaying 880 pounds. After we select it, it goes to zero. And to the left of that, it indicates hook block equal to zero, which tells the operator that he has engaged the tear option. At this point, anything in excess of the load that was present when the button was hit will show up as load on the system. However, when it comes to calculating the maximum capacity, the hook block is still included in that calculation. Anything that was present when you pushed that button is still considered part of the load. In order to turn off the tear function, we go back into config and this item now says remove tear. It's highlighted, you hit the check mark, and we return to an 880 pound load. The third item on the list under config is language. The system can display several different languages. So if we go ahead and hit the check mark, we will see the various languages that the system will display in. The software on this particular console is set to display in either English or French. Some of the other consoles have a variety of other languages included. Date and time can also be selected under config. And in here, after hitting the check mark, you can go ahead and make an adjustment for the date and the time. Uh, currently, this system is set for, of course, January 1st, 2006. So let's go ahead and change that. We can simply scroll up. It is now 7. Uh, let's make it 725. And let's go for 2010. And we'll say it's 1350. That really doesn't have much of an effect for the operator unless you're taking pictures of issues that may have occurred on your console. Uh, some of the screenshots that you may take may show the current date and time. So the last item under config is backlight. This alters the illumination of the console. If we hit the check mark, you will see that the system is currently displaying in night level and it's at a value of 5. We could go ahead and increase that to 100 and hit the check mark. Now of course the screen is much brighter. If we want to get back to where we were, we come back in to backlight, set the night level to 5, and we're back where we were. We've been operating with the console in night mode in order to reduce the glare for a good video recording. However, most of the time you're going to be operating using day mode. So we'll go ahead and hit the mode button and we'll scroll down to day mode and we'll hit the check mark. This makes the screen much brighter. Under the mode button we also have info mode. This provides the same data as we saw by hitting this button here on the main screen. Under the mode button, we also have diagnostics. When we hit the check mark, what we will see is the current status of all of the sensors on the system. If we were to go to one of them, let's select extension 1. It says it's at 21 feet and of course it says it's connected. So when we hit the check mark, it will provide us with a little bit more information. The AIN value being the digital value that's being read off of the sensor after it's been converted from analog. And that's the value that's being sent back to the system. Most of the stuff that you're going to find in diagnostics is going to be relative to troubleshooting the system. And when you get a hold of someone like me on the phone, we're going to tell you to go into diagnostics and we're going to ask you for the AIN value we'll probably be asking you for the DR plus value also.
Under the Mode button, we have also Calibration. There's a password that's required to get into Calibration. Some systems require two different passwords. One of them allows access to things which can be altered by a user. Uh, the other is such items as crane dimensions, which we don't want anyone to be altering. So, if we hit the check mark, it asks for the password. If you need to put in a password, you can acquire it through contacting either Manitowoc, Crane Care, or Reiko Wiley. In the calibration menu, there are a variety of things which can be done. The uh, select sensor can be used to select either the angle or the length sensor. The zero sensor function would be used to zero that chosen sensor, and then one could span that sensor also. Select pressure transducer is used to select either load one or load two for calibration, and then we have the ability to zero the pressure or span the pressure. The items that are further down in this list are things which are not generally going to be done by an operator, unless, of course, you purchase a system to install yourself in the field, in which case you'll be directed as to how to run the calibration and how to access this particular section of the software.